Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week we have started the series, How to Live and Not Die. And our text scripture is Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And you should put that in your own heart and make that confession. I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And so we're talking about how to live and not die. And as I've said already this week, the teachings that I have given over the last two years have laid the foundation for you to be able to walk in this revelation, the victory over death. And as we've already looked at several scriptures this week, that we face death every day. Death is all around. There are the natural causes of death. And then there is also the unnatural or the um, forces of, of violence and and terrorism and accidents and all those kind of things that really present death to us every single day. And we must know how to overcome. And so the question is, do you know how to face death and live? You see, most people do not. It is easy to die. Very easy. Anybody can die. The question is, can you live? Do you know how to face death and live? And this is the answer. It's a simple answer, but it's the answer to the famous age old question. Why do bad things happen to good Christians? It's because many, many, many Christians do not know and understand and walk in practicing their spiritual authority. And they do not know the, the tactics of the enemy and our authority and the weapons of our warfare, the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the word of God that we can use to overcome death and other kinds of um, accidents and harm that can come our way any moment of any day. And so people do not keep their guard up. People, even, even Jesus said, other writers of the Bible said, be watchful, be vigilant. Even in Peter, first Peter five, eight, be vigilant. Your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Obviously, he can't devour everyone if he has to seek. If he can just bulldoze and knock everybody down, then he wouldn't have to look anywhere. He could close his eyes and just bulldoze through and knock everybody down. He can't. Why? Because there is a spiritual protection available to us. And, but we have to know how to use it and we must be activating it. We must have our spiritual armor on, our spiritual weapons in hand, and we must stand firm and stand against death. And if you are not on guard to these things that could hurt you, then they can easy, easily just come and knock you down. You can become a prey to these things, to the devil's attacks in this way. So that's why we're studying our spiritual authority so that if you keep it active every day, just simply by faith, and that's what we're going to get into more detail about, but you can keep your guard up and you can keep your shield of protection on you. Hallelujah. And so then we saw that God said in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. And then we looked at examples. First of all, we looked at Paul in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. Paul said that he was exposed to death again and again. Why? How? He had been flogged. He had been beaten. He had been stoned. He had been shipwrecked. Paul knew how to face death and live. 
He could face death spending a day and a night in the sea and live. He could face death in many beatings and many floggings and he could live and overcome them until he lived to be old. Jesus, we gave examples in the Gospels, Luke 4, John 8, and John 10. Multiple times, Jesus was exposed to death and his life was threatened by the Jews. And at first in Luke 4, it was by the people in his hometown. His fa- his, he faced death, his life was threatened, but he knew his spiritual authority and he exercised it and he overcame it. In John 10... Verses 17 and 18, and I want to give you these again, and I hope you'll take me seriously and you will memorize these two verses, because these verses could save your life. In a moment of danger, you will not have time to go home and get your Bible. You know that. You won't have time to go grab your Bible and say, now what was that verse? No, I hope you memorize these and get these in your heart. John 10, 17 and 18. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. Underline it, circle it, and confess it for yourself. No one takes my life from me. He said, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And so he knew he had the authority over his own life, authority to lay it down and authority to take it up and that no one could take it from him. He exercised that authority in the garden of Gethsemane. Even well, he exercised it in those previous occasions, Luke four, John eight, John 10, in those first um, uh, times occasions when he was threatened, his life was threatened and He did not yield, but he exercised authority. And then even when it came time for him to give his life as a sacrifice, they could not take him unless he yielded, unless he surrendered, unless he gave them his life. He always walked in complete authority over himself. Even I want to remind you that John, the apostle John, the beloved Also, it's written not in the Bible, but in church history that John the Apostle was also taken by the Roman emperor and thrown into a pot of boiling oil. They tried to kill him. And for most people, that would do the job. Boiling in oil would kill you, but not John. Nope. He didn't give in. He didn't give up his life. He was like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and they came out without even the smell of smoke. Well, John the apostle came out of the boiled, the boiling oil, and they pulled him out unharmed, not even one harm of any kind done to him, not any harm done to him at all. Not one kind of hurt done to him at all. He came out alive and they said, well, we can't kill this guy. So let's just banish him to the Isle of Patmos. And that's when they sent him to the Isle of Patmos, where we have written for us the book of Revelation. He received the revelation from Jesus Christ. But he was there on Patmos because they couldn't kill him. They tried and they couldn't. Why? Because he exercised his spiritual authority. And so Jesus always exercised his authority. He stayed in authority over himself all the time. And you have the same authority. Luke ten nineteen. Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of of the enemy. Nothing will harm you to overcome all. All means all, and it includes death, all the power of the enemy. So take note of this. If you're taking notes, write this down. In every situation, you are in authority over yourself. Maybe not everybody else around you, but over yourself 
as long as you exercise it. It could be that everybody else around you dies, but you don't have to die. You are in every situation. You are in authority over yourself. Remember the circles of jurisdiction, the circles of authority, the concentric circles of authority that we've talked about in the previous lessons that you are that central circle, you have 100% authority over you. And I'm not going to repeat all that teaching we gave for six months. But you have authority over you more than anybody else, including God. That's why God doesn't make you get saved. You have a free will to choose him or not, to obey or rebel. And you have total authority over your mind to think what you want to think over your mouth to say what you want to say and over your body to do what you want to do. God doesn't control you. He doesn't possess you. If you ever say, God, just control me and don't let me do that. It'll never happen. Now, Satan wants to possess you. And if you give yourself fully to Satan, he will possess your, even your body and your mind. But God never will. God doesn't do that. He leaves you in authority over yourself so that in every situation, in every moment, you have a choice to make over every thought. You choose what thoughts you're going to think, if you're going to accept or reject. And that's why in second Corinthians 10, four, five, six, it says that you cast down imaginations and every high thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. You're in authority over your mind. Nobody else. You're an authority over your mouth. We talked about the power of your words. You control your words. Nobody else. And you're an authority over your body, over your life, over what happens to you. You have authority. Nobody else does more than you. You are in 100% authority. That means when anybody comes against you to try to steal your life, any terrorist, any act of violence, any gunman, Yes, gunmen. And that's another problem that's in America. Not just terrorists, but gunmen who just go crazy. You have authority over that. And I've heard testimony after testimony, true stories of people who had a gun pointed at their face. And the guy behind the gun was ready to pull the trigger. And the person knew their spiritual authority, and they said, no, in the name of Jesus, you cannot harm me. I don't know what all words they said. They said different things on different occasions. Different people said it different ways. But they said, no, you can't hurt me. I take authority over that gun. And those gunmen, story after story after story, there were times when they tried to pull the trigger. I've heard it where they tried as best they could to pull that trigger and they couldn't. It wouldn't work. The trigger wouldn't work. They thought, what's wrong with my gun? And they pointed it off in another direction up in the air and it fired. And they put it back in the face of the person they were trying to kill and it would not fire. It would not fire because that person took authority over it. And this, I I, I remember hearing a story about a mother doing this over her children when her children had gone on a trip somewhere and the mother had a warning from God to pray for their protection. She did not know that they were having a gun put in their face, but she was praying for them. And these were children. And so she prayed for their protection and they were saved and delivered from a gunman who tried to kill them. So you do have authority and we're going to get into this more about how we're going to get more into principles in the next few broadcasts, but I'm wanting you to see this and make this statement written down and blazoned in your heart. In every situation, you are in authority over yourself. You may or may not be able to affect other people. That has a lot of different conditions involved, but you do have authority 
over yourself and what happens to you. As long as you exercise your spiritual authority and you can, as we're going to talk about how to do it, you can put up your protection shield and take authority in any situation and you can keep your life instead of dying. You can stay protected instead of being hurt. Hallelujah. And so you must know that Jesus had that authority and he gave you his authority also. And we talked about how Jesus gave up his spirit and then how Jesus overcame death. And in Revelation 118, Jesus said, I hold the keys of death and hell. Or as modern translations or some other translations, death in Hades. Hades is hell. Satan does not hold the keys. Jesus does. Jesus is your Lord and he gave you the authority. He's holding the keys over death and he gives you authority to walk in his authority. That's more evidence that you have authority to rule over death because Jesus has the, the keys to death. He won the victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And re remember Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and what? Death. You see, what I'm trying to do is renew your thinking because most people think that death is an enemy that is more powerful than us, that death, whenever it comes, it just can smash you like a bug, that death is bigger than you. It isn't. You are bigger than death. If you're born again, of course, you have to be a born again Christian, because if you're not a born again Christian, then you, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is not in you. You have not been redeemed from the curse and the law of sin and death. That's the number one thing right there. You need to get saved if you're not. So if you're listening to me right now and you've never been born again, just say this prayer real quickly. Father God. I thank you that you sent Jesus Christ, your son, to die on the cross for me and for my sins. I receive him now into my heart and life to be my savior and Lord. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And I thank you for saving me now, today, in Jesus name. Amen. And if you say that prayer or anything similar to that, confessing Jesus as your Lord, asking him into your heart, be your Lord and Savior, you are born again. You are a child of God. Jesus overcame death and he gave you the authority to overcome death. And so this is just a mindset that I'm trying to change your paradigm, your your mindset that most people think death is invincible. It isn't. It isn't. You are invincible to a degree. Most in most uh, everything. When you walk in the laws of the spirit, the laws of the kingdom, I should say the spiritual laws. And when you exercise your authority, you can overcome death. Death is not something that is greater and more powerful than you. You have authority over death. Death can be under your feet as well as under Jesus because Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. You're set free from the law of death. It has no more authority over you legally. 
It is only because people have lack of knowledge. They do not exercise their authority over death. And therefore, they succumb to death when they face it. Now, I want to just show you one more thing. I'm trying to help you to see God wants you to live a long, full, blessed life. God does not want your life cut short by accident, by sickness, by tragedy, whatever, anything. God wants you to live a long, full, blessed life. And that's where I've said, why do bad things happen to good people, good Christians? It's always because of not exercising their authority, especially in the areas of, well, especially in ignorance. Most people are ignorant, just ignorant of that authority, and they have not exercise that authority. But let me show you, God wants you to live a long, full life. He does not want your life to be cut short. He does not want your years to be cut short. In Genesis chapter six, verse three, Genesis six, three, then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with man forever for he is mortal. His days will be a hundred and twenty years. So God said in Genesis chapter six, that man's days will be a hundred and twenty years. Now I can go into a long teaching on that and I don't have time. And that's not really the main point, except for you to see the the long the long life is what god wants you to have how many years we won't go into that right now that's another study for another time but what is obvious is that there is a long life god had has planned for us to live and then especially look at this one psalm 9116 psalm 9116 with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I like the word satisfy there because it shows us God wants us to live as long as we are satisfied or until we are satisfied in life. And if you're not satisfied with life yet, then you shouldn't be dying. And that goes for children, teenagers, young adults, middle age. If you're not satisfied, you should not die. Because God said in Psalm 91:16, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is a key Scripture promise for people, especially if you're facing a sickness that could be terminal and you could say, God, I'm not satisfied yet. I'm not ready to die because I'm not satisfied. And so I want to live longer. And God has given you a promise to live as long as you're satisfied or until you're satisfied. Glory to God. Well, I'm out of time. I'm going to share more of these long life scriptures to you next week. And then we'll get into principles about how to receive protection, how to get it. But I just want to remind you again that we are inviting you to be a partner with us in this radio program, Victorious Faith radio broadcast and we believe God with you for your finances for your family for your health for your jobs as people write in we set our faith in agreement for you for victories we've seen answers to prayer we've seen healings we've seen jobs great jobs provided by God in answers to prayers so if you have not been a partner with us I ask you to partner I ask you to help support 
support this radio program because you are supporting the kingdom of God. This is one of the ministries in the kingdom of God that is preaching the gospel and the word and helping the body and even helping people around the world in other countries. And so you can write to me at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 1418, Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104, or go online to my website at victoriousfaith.co and go to the donation page and give online. And we pray and believe God for his blessing on your life as you partner with us. We, As every seed that we receive, we lay our hands on it and we bless it and we pray over it in the name of Jesus expecting and commanding the blessing to be released on the seed and the giver. And we agree with you for your harvest. And I pray for you right now, Father God, I pray for everyone listening to me right now that they are covered by your blood in the name of Jesus. They're surrounded by your angels in the name of Jesus. I command that no harm shall come near them today. They shall hear your voice and be led by your spirit. They shall be directed. Their steps shall be directed and ordered by you to be in the right place at the right time to be with the right people and doing the right thing in all situations. And I thank you for working in them and through them in Jesus name. Amen. Now go to church this Sunday. Join me next week and walk in the victory. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.